That's a real deal helmet. Yeah, he is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yeah. It's a real deal helmet. It's actually the first one of these I've had in my hands. With scrutineering, scrutineering tag. Like, it's not ACU, British Motorsport. Motorcycle Union of Ireland approved. Michelin. I think he went between Michelin and Dunlops in his career. So just finished up, seeing everyone at the offices at RI here in Netherlands, but we've come to this, probably the most impressive building I've been to. If you look around, you'll see all the helmets on the wall. And here we have Igmar, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about this facility and what you do here and um, what these cool machines are for. Yeah, no, where we are now is, what we call this the AIC, the RI Inspiration Center. And we use this facility mainly to, to train dealers, uh, but also marshals, uh, uh, ambulance staff, uh, but a lot of dealers are normally coming here. And what we do is uh, we have some test uh, machines here where we uh, show what happens during an impact, what, uh, what happens with your head, uh, energy that is released that needs to be absorbed, and also how you can prevent that. But this is just for educational purposes because we, um, yeah, we don't do the testing itself uh, here. We do that uh, through a third party in uh, a certified uh, test lab in, uh, in Holland. One big question we get asked is when you when I want to go and buy a helmet for my son or for my friend and you go into a dealer shop and you see all these helmets, all these choice, but Arai is at the highest end of the price market. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's all what's, what's, what's in the helmet. Eh? It's, uh, all helmets look more or less the same. Uh, you have some, some funny shaped helmets with aerodynamic spoilers on it. Um, we believe that the helmet should be as round as possible. Um, what we do with testing, and every helmet needs to be tested, and what it only says is that you are allowed to, bring your, to offer your helmet on the market. Um, but what's really different, uh, the difference is with, with RI, is that we don't believe that testing is everything. Uh, what happens, what you are protecting is someone who's on, on the real road, and eh? what's happens in, happening in the real world. And um, to give you an example, uh, tests here are done at a speed of 28 kilometers an hour. More or less the, the, the testing speed for ECE uh, uh, approvals. But in, an, in, you, but in the real world, you in can the real crash world, it goes much faster. 80 miles per yeah. hour or 70 uh, miles per hour. Yeah, but if you, if you increase the speed by four, so if you go from 28 to, let's say, 100 kilometers an hour in the impact, the, the speed is just four times more, but the impact that needs to be absorbed is about 12 to 13 times higher. So that is an incredible amount of energy that, that needs to be absorbed. You can focus on absorbing impact, but more important is how you can prevent that impact energy gets into the helmet. If you can prevent that that, that energy gets into the helmet, you don't need to absorb it. And sure. that, is, that is the real difference with, with RI. Um, and we make outer shells of a, of a certain construction, of certain material, um, to prevent that energy uh, goes into the helmet, um, but that it is glanced off. And, and that really may, is, the, is the biggest difference. Yeah, this is interesting to see all the different steps, just for painting. Um, this is how it gets out of the mold. Then it, it, it is cut by a laser cutter here. Everything for the rest is done by hand. And then it goes through the process of painting. And you can see how many different layers of paint that needs to be um, added onto the helmet, it needs to be sanded again, uh, checked again, a new layer is on top of that, just to make these pinholes, uh, to, to, to have these pinholes disappearing. The carbon, uh, sorry, this uh, superfiber material is, is, is not a, a very paint-friendly material, um, but nevertheless, RI chooses to use this material because it's the best, we believe, for uh, making our helmets. I've read or seen <laughs> that, do you know some helmets you've got, especially, 
I had another motocross helmet I remember back in my early days and I could do this with the cheek pads <laughs> yeah and I felt like if I'm gonna crash it's not good but I've seen a test that a human could stand on this and the shell won't break should we try it out Go on, <laughs> I trust you guys <laughs> Are you on? Yeah, he is. Oh! <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yep. Still scary. <laughs> Where the guy in Switzerland, he was actually... If we would talk about impacts and you can see things that can happen on the road, um, this is a customer's helmet and he went through a corner and he got high-sided and he crashed on one of these iron bars that was in there. And this iron bar, this happened on, on him, and he's okay. So just important how much the, the safety of the helmet in, on the impact, what can happen on the road. That's nuts. Yeah. This is the ECE tower, and the ECE tower is the 2205 uh, regulation. Uh, it is a free fall, the helmet drops, comes on an anvil, we have different anvils, and it bounces away and it has to do on certain regulations to get to the approval. So I will make it in order. It goes up to a height of uh, 3 meters 25 and then it's a free fall with 28 kilometers an hour. Three, two, one. Oh. Holy cow! If you now see the impact on the helmet, Tell you what, there's not, there's not a lot of helmets will pass that test. Even. That's 28 miles an hour. Close. Yeah, but yeah, just, just but, to get an approval. But and how? Just, yeah. You know, we... You can see the crack into it. On the need, on the need to paint. You can, you can take the paint off if you want. If it, if it goes. You can see the little crack. In. In the painting, in the tent shell. But, but the shell's fine. But the shell's fine. And if you see now on the inside, if you go now in here, you see a little deforming. Yes. You can see a little line over here. Mm. That's where it deformed a little bit. Wow. Almost not to, nothing to see. No. That's mad. And that's only 20 And important is that inside this test tank. So I had this crash in Emila 2012, 13 maybe? Yeah, as well. It's yeah. massive, massive in qualifying. You go through the first chicane, you went down, I went right and left and just gassed it. So it's third or third gear. This is the helmet. Landed on my head pretty hard. Hopefully we'll find the video for you, right? And I was completely fine. I raced the next day. And I like, obviously I had some aches and pains in my body. I was lying in bed that night and my wife, Tarsh, my girlfriend back then, I think, or maybe we were married. She was like, her face was here and I was sleeping. I was like, and I opened my eyes like, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, I'm just checking. You had such a big crash. I couldn't hear you breathing. I was like, I'm fine. Go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, she like probably scared me after that one. It's not even a selling pitch, is it? Because I, I race at the top top level, world championship level, and I crash. You can never know when you're gonna crash. You don't know how you're gonna crash. But at least I know when I do, I'm in the best possible hands. And like safety is the last of my concerns when I leave the pit box, you know? You put your helmet on and you fail. You don't think about it, you know? You go out and you give 110% every single corner to be as fast as I can be, so yeah, very grateful. And seeing tests like this makes it, yeah, it's mad. It's like, so fortunate. Yeah, yeah. thanks mate. Yeah. So we see lots and lots of helmets, but what you don't see, because it might be minuscule or it might be massive, is 
every single helmet in here has some sort of crash damage. So the rider's crashed. It's come back here, a bit of R&D. And um, yeah, it all helps to go to make sure the latest and greatest helmets are cutting edge and the safest helmets you can have. And I'm sure if you look hard enough, you'll find plenty of mine because I've been a good test rider for RI. I think mine aren't here. Not a crash, mate. This was Hareth, the last of the fast rights. I was flying. It was one of them winter tests where I was going faster and faster and faster. And something was going to give. And it did. And the funny thing is, some people ask, yeah, but he's wearing special helmets. Well, this was a winter test helmet that's sprayed because I wanted a nice fancy job. But it's sprayed over the top of a replica helmet that you can buy. So you can buy my race helmets in the shop. How cool is that? So Marcel was saying about um, about this guy that had this pole um, and that he went onto a, onto a pole and had his helmet been penetrated by by that iron pole. Um, that's one of the examples why it's so important to do penetration tests as well, and that's what we do here. It's a striker of three kilograms that drops from a certain speed. So which button I have to press, uh, Martin? Just uh, the the red one. The red one. Yeah. So you will see that the striker will just drop down from that height and then it shouldn't go through the helmet. Oh! So that's a, a spike, a big spike test and it ha that, but that hasn't gone through? No, nope. the shaft, no. Nope. I can if do it, it I, can, I can. And there it goes again. No, you still don't hear a beat. So that's us wrapped up here at Arai. What what a day. And even I, and I've been here before, but I've learned even more stuff. So, so informative. And I'm so fortunate and lucky to have Arai on my head. So I really hope you lot enjoyed this video and you learn lots about Arai. And when it comes to buying a motorcycle helmet, now you're equipped with more information to buy the perfect helmet for you. So make sure, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.